who are not with us. Uh, the big story over the weekend, Deion Sanders, who of course has made such a splash uh, at the University at Colorado, uh, the football program last year, winning the four games, but starting so quickly and everyone in the world paying attention. They have now banned, he and the football program have banned a columnist from the Denver Post named Sean Keeler from asking questions after what the university deems as a series of sustained personal attacks. And we ran through this for you moments ago when we heard a little bit of an exchange from Dion with another reporter on Saturday. And Paul Feinbaum, who's good enough to stay with us here, had a very strong reaction. And I could see that everyone really wanted to get in on the conversation. And so I appreciate everyone sitting tight through a break. Uh, Dan Orlovsky, let me come to you next. We hear Dion essentially banning this one particular columnist from asking questions and coming out on Saturday as he did somewhat strongly again. What's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, for Paul, respectfully to call him a bully and a hypocrite is ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, so, one, I don't necessarily mind that Dion's trying to control a little bit of the narrative. He's obviously been somebody that's been in the focal point for the, basically the majority of his life. And it's, we don't know exactly everything that's being said. Maybe some of it is public, and we don't know if anything is done behind the scenes. But I don't mind the fact that he's trying to control a little bit of the narrative, both him and the institution. We can sit here and say, because of the seat that you have, you just have to sit there and take it. But we also do live in a time where at some point, some of these people are allowed to stand up for themselves and not just constantly get dragged. And I don't think he's being a bully. He's just saying, hey, if this is going to be mainly what you do, or only what you do in relation to me or the program, then we're, we're not going to have any type of interaction. And you're not going to be allowed because not everybody should get a seat when it comes to having the opportunity to cover a, a, a program and or their head coach. Um, Dion's not going to be able to run from all of it. I think he's aware of that. At some point, the, the criticism is a background noise to success. You're not going to be able to run from all of it, to, all of it but to say, He's being a bully and hypocritical. That's extreme when it comes to this situation. That, that, those were what Paul said a moment ago. And Paul, to some degree, big time college coaches have always controlled the narrative and, and, and have, you, have, have dished out access and used those means to do it. The, the difference here, it feels to me, is that he's just publicly announcing that they're doing it in this way. Go ahead, Paul, I'll let you respond before I get the guys in. Well, there are a couple of things to remember here. Uh, the University of Colorado is a public institution. Uh, this is not a private entity where you can uh, put a wall up at, at the door. As far as Deion Sanders, first of all, he doesn't have to announce it. There's a reason why I think he's announcing it, Greeny. He's trying to intimidate anyone from going down the same dark road. By the way, I, I have been to a million press conferences where a coach would not call on me because the coach did not like me. I'm sure you've been in the same spot. Greeny. That's all you have to do. But, but the reason why Dion is going public is he wants total control and things have not gone his way. That, that's really what this is all about. If things were going swimmingly, he, he wouldn't really have to worry about uh, this guy at the Denver Post. And by the way, the Denver Post is, a, is, is an important tool in that state. It's the most important uh, public media entity uh, and outlet. Uh, and, and why you decide to declare war is beyond me. But then again, uh, there, there are a lot of things about Dion that I simply do not understand. I happen to have a former employee of the Denver Post sitting to my right. Shefty, what is your take on all this? <laughs> well, having worked there, having worked with Dion in the past, I too am a fan and a friend of his. And I like this. I don't understand why he would elevate the columnist Sean Keeler, and shine a light on him. Sean Keeler is trying to get noticed with what he does, with his job as being a columnist. And now Dion, by announcing that he's not going to answer his questions, has elevated this columnist and given him more relevance. And so here's somebody that he doesn't like the way he's being treated. And yet he's done a huge favor for Sean Keeler by announcing this publicly when all he had to do was stop answering this guy's questions privately without making any proclamations. I don't understand why it was handled in this way, where it had to become something that had the exact opposite effect of what I think he intended to do in this particular case. What do you think of it all, D. Wood? Yeah, listen, the first thing I, the first thing I asked when this, when this topic was broached in our, in our production meeting was like, was this guy personal? Did he attack his family? Like, what, what's going on where you get to the point where you're literally publicly banning a reporter? And, and the, thing, the thing that came to my mind was, you've made this guy a martyr. 
Think about that. You when you come when you come out in the public and announce that listen, you're banned. Like Sheffy said, you've elevated his pro profile 1,000%. Mm, oh yeah. So are you really winning the battle here between you and the media? Because listen, I always say at the end of the day, with all the things that come with Dion, and I love Dion Sanders. I've always been a fan of Dion Sanders for a long time. At the end of the day, bro, you still got to win. Like we, like, we can't forget, like, the, the real substance of this whole thing. All the bluster and everything, that's great, and it's entertaining, but... Until you start winning, none of this type of stuff is going to go away. But by the way, again, he's still one of the more iconic figures in college football. He's still an athletic legend. And here you are bringing this guy up on your level to a certain extent and giving him the attention that he wouldn't have got. I just don't understand why he would Paul, I'll that. give you a final word here. And, and I'd love you to explain because you know it better than, than everybody. And, then, and you know we're going to do this in the second hour because Dan has more to say. And, and, and I'm just going to run out of time. But, Paul, just most big-time college uh, coaches operate in much smaller markets, right? They're not covered as much by the Denver Post. They're covered by little newspapers in little markets. And the access to those coaches is so valuable to reporters, that's usually how coaches control the narrative, and they do it without announcing it, right? And, and sadly today, because of the, the, the media market on, on these levels, reporters have to play along or, or they won't get access and, and they won't have jobs. Uh, this columnist decided to go after Dion, and I agree with uh, with, with Shefty and, and D. Wood. Uh, I've been that guy before who the coach called out. I promise you, Sean is celebrating today. I mean, he is a national figure as opposed to a local columnist in Denver, which is fine, but it, but he's not on the national scene. And all he did was give an opinion. Uh, D. D. What are you right? Uh, he, he didn't personalize it. He, he didn't go after the family. He just talked about Dion, the coach, and, and the, the path that he has taken, which is a terrible one in this case. All right.